So the final common pathway is the neuromuscular junction, so where a neuron synapses onto a muscle to make it contract. And these neurons usually release acetylcholine, and the receptors, uh, the receptors of the acetylcholine open channels that allow sodium and potassium into the muscle cell. And these, of course, depolarize the cell uh, by causing and cause more voltage-gated ion channels to open. And you start depolarizing it, which, which releases calcium and causes the muscle to contract with, uh, by activating actin and myosin. And then there's this acetylcholine just kind of hanging around in the synapse. And it's actually broken down in next picture. So you see the acetylcholine's in the, in the vesicle. It's released. It crosses the, the cleft and goes to these receptors where it causes its chain reaction. The acetylcholine isn't consumed. It hangs around and then an enzyme comes in breaks it down into choline and acetic acid, and it's actually recycled back into the original axon. So you have a, it looks like a, a coupled sodium choline transporter, which pulls it back into the cell as the cell is repul or as sodium flows in. It reacts with acetyl-CoA and is converted back into acetylcholine, transported into a new vesicle and the cycle goes again. So this way the cells, the neurons don't always have to be making new neurotransmitter. And if they do make new ones, it's made up way at the soma. But maybe the axon isn't close to the soma, so you have to, this provides a lot faster way for, to replenish those stores, because 200 vesicles per axon potential is a lot. So on the postsynaptic side, uh, these are transmitter-gated ion channels, so not voltage like in the action channel, but these need a neurotransmitter or another protein to bind to them to cause them to open or close. So a couple of the main important ones are glutamate, which is the primary excitatory channel, or transmitter, which opens sodium channels. It can also be paired with AMPA and NMDA, uh, and their receptors, either these either work together to open a channel, or maybe either of them will open a channel. GABA and glycine uh, are associated with chloron, chloride ion channels. And again, these channels are made up of multiple subunits. Another, uh, not a transmitter-gated ion channel, but sometimes they bind to G-protein-coupled receptors which start a chain reaction to open various receptors, or autoreceptors are sometimes on the presynaptic side that allow feedback loops so that the cell, the, the axon can know when there's enough neurotransmitter so maybe it's, it doesn't have to keep releasing it anymore. So the AMPA receptor is made up of three types of subunits in a combination, so you have a no, four. Two alphas, a gamma, a beta, and a delta. And they form a, a channel, and each subunit is made up of a protein that goes through the membrane a couple different times, um, M1, M2, and M3 units. And the alpha subunits have the acetylcholine binding sites. So when they bind, you, ch you change the conformation of the protein, causing the channel to change its shape. The NMDA glutamate receptor requires not just glutamate, but glutamate and depolarization. So it's looking for synchronous activity. So you start off with, if it's just glutamate and you're not having any depolarization, the glutamate binds, but there's actually a magnesium ion blocking the channel. So the glutamate changed, but nothing can get through yet. However, when you depolarize the cell, the magnesium is released. And then you have the glutamate come in, and you open this channel. And this channel is a nonspecific channel. So it allows, or nonspecific cation channel. So sodium, potassium, and calcium 
flow down their gradients into or out of the cell, and then you'll get your response. So this is looking at one of those subunits, and each subunit, each receptor is going to have a little bit different protein structure. And you can kind of see in the string where it crosses the membrane. So you have this big tail uh, outside the cell. You have the M1 unit, then some more inside the cell, M2, M3, then M4 is at the end. And you can see that each one is a little bit different length, different separation. And so they're each going to have different areas for proteins and neurotransmitters to bind to.